In the previous video, I explained that there is a difference between the way pharmacology views immunomodulators and the way we view them in herbal medicine. You're looking at a chart for the pharmacological definition. Immunomodulators is sitting there at the top and it's divided into immunostimulants and immunosuppressants. Usually when herbs are studied and termed to be immunomodulators, what they're actually describing is an immunostimulant. However, in herbal medicine, we look at them as more of tonic support for the immune system. They're slower acting with a more prolonged effect as compared to immunostimulants. Immunomodulating herbs build and strengthen the immune system. They're generally used for people who get sick all the time with colds and flus, or they have other symptoms of immune system dysfunction, like seasonal allergies, environmental allergies, food intolerances, cancer, and autoimmunity problems. Think of them as deeply nourishing food and herbs for the immune system. They're also called deep immune tonics used for a longer period of time, and they have a more balancing rather than a stimulating effect on the body. As tonics, they're not typically overheating or stimulating and match a wide variety of constitutions. So we can examine each herb for its traditional use and constitutional picture to find the remedy with the greatest affinity for each situation. Therapeutically, they're used when there's poor immunity. For example, people who experience frequent infections due to low immune resilience. They're also used when the immune system's overactive, as in allergies and autoimmunity. This seemingly dualistic nature can seem miraculous, especially to those who are familiar with the one direction, unidirectional action of pharmaceuticals. Considering that most plants contain thousands of bioactive compounds, there is an immense synergy involved with each herb's complex biochemistry. And when we add the unique physiology of each human's body into the equation, the possibilities are almost infinite. Most immunomodulators also possess adaptogenic qualities. Adaptogens are tonic herbs that help balance the body in its attempt to adapt to emotional, physical, and mental stress. One of the things that herbal immunomodulators can do is equilibrate the endocrine and nervous control of the immune system by balancing the hypothalamus-pituitary-adrenal interplay. These tonic herbs help harmonize the control centers of the body by affecting hormonal regulation of the immune system. Another possible mode of action is regulation of Th1 and Th2 balance, which involves equilibrium of cell-mediated and antibody-mediated immunity. When you decide you want to boost your immune system, it's a good idea to know something about Th1 and Th2 balance because there can be an imbalance. Some people are dominant Th1, others are dominant Th2, and when that occurs, there are going to be different types of symptom pictures. So just to give you an example, I'm going to click on Th1. That's T cell helper type 1, promoting cell-mediated immunity, and it tends to produce pro-inflammatory responses which are necessary for killing intracellular parasites and for perpetuating autoimmune responses. People who have a Th1 dominance creating symptomology usually feel better with coffee or caffeine, but feel worse with immune stimulators, echinacea, golden seal, immune-boosting mushrooms, or probiotics. Th2 dominance creating symptomology are the opposite. They're going to feel better with immune stimulators. One of the handy things about the Ultimate Herbal Database is that we get a quick overview of whatever is associated with our main topic that will be located in the middle of the screen. For example, here, TH1. Looking at this, we see on the left of it, type 4 hypersensitivities. Let's click on that. In these types of hypersensitivities, TH1 is going to be dominant autoimmune myocarditis, chronic transplant rejection, 
type 1 diabetes mellitus, multiple sclerosis, and so on. There's also a test for it that you could learn more about there, the Mantau test. Let's go back to Th1 and look above here, the Th1, Th2 model. This is important whenever you're going to be doing something to boost your immune system, understand what might be going on with you. It explains in detail how all of this is working. It's good to know if your condition is Th1 or Th2 dominant. I'm just going to read this little section here. In chronic viral disease, the worst of which is the HIV progression to AIDS, there is a shift from Th1 cellular immunity to the Th2 humoral immunity. Since antibodies are not as effective in de defeating viruses as are the cells themselves, viral diseases progress when there's a shift from Th1 to Th2. Now, I think that this could play a role in what's going on with our long haulers. Okay, let's go back to immunomodulators. This is a chart that shows the various cells in the innate and adaptive immune system. It'll be handy if you decide you want to dig down into which cells are being affected by your herbs. You'll find studies, for example, that tell you that the way an herb affects the immune system is through its action on the macrophages. Of course, you'd be able to use the search box to look up macrophages to learn more about them and what they do, but right here it kind of gives you a quick overview. Let's move on to the pharmaceutical use of this term. As mentioned, these pharmaceutical drugs that are called immunomodulators have a different context, and they're going to be either immunostimulating or immunosuppressive at their target site, and they're going to have differing effects depending on the target site, for example, macrophages. They're used to stimulate immune activity in cancer and suppress immune activity in autoimmunity and organ transplants. When you're reading studies on this, here's where it can be a little bit confusing because of their use of the classification, and it may not reflect the same immunomodulating tonic effect that we've been talking about. Be discerning when you read the studies. Many of the herbs that we use as herbal immunomodulators come from Asia. That's where the practice of tonic medicine became highly developed. Historically, traditional Western herbalism and traditional Western medicine in general completely missed the boat on tonic medicine. We just never developed that understanding of the interplay of plants and herbs for balanced health. We have, fortunately, been integrating Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine into our practice, so we're getting a better understanding of it now. But typically in traditional Western medicine, the word tonic is used very loosely for pretty much anything that just gives you a little boost and makes you feel better. So that's another area that can be confusing when you read something as a tonic understand whether it's the Western or the Eastern use of the word. If you want to get into the use of tonics in Ayurveda, you can explore Rasayana. If you want to know something about the chemistry of plant-derived immunomodulators, go through this section. It's rather general, but it gives you an idea of what's in plants that gives them this activity. Here's a book. Choosing a Natural Immunomodulator, a Scientific Approach. And then, as usual, we have articles and links to studies. Remember also to open up the info panel all the way, clicking the little arrow, because to see all of the tabs, you're going to need to do that. I'm just going to click on a couple of these. Here is a PDF. A review of immunomodulators in the Indian traditional healthcare system. This is quite good. I'm going to scroll down. You see they've got a great table here of a lot of the plants. For example, mulberry. It tells about the parts used, the constituents, and various biological activities. And then we're going to click on another one. This is uh, from PubMed. A review on hepatoprotective and immunomodulatory herbal plants. 
this one I think is important. Our immune system reboots during sleep. And this takes us back to the importance of lifestyle in herbal medicine. In the next videos, we're going to zero in on the types of immunomodulators that take center stage in herbal medicine, the immune tonics. We'll be looking at the medicinal mushrooms and a few other herbs like licorice and jugulin. Then in the video after that, we're going to go to immunonutrition. Remember, food is medicine, and it is really the foundation along with other lifestyle steps. We have to make sure that our immune system has the nutrients that are needed to function. If we don't take care of that, it doesn't matter what herbs you take, they're just not going to work very well. To get the most out of this series, this would be a great time for database members to Go back to the section I briefly covered, the TH1 and TH2. I'm opening up the info panel again. Read through this text, and there are three fairly short videos on the tabs that you can go through. It won't take very long to get a really good understanding about how all of this works. And then go to TH1. I didn't show you everything on that yet, but there is a section here that shows what supplements, foods, herbs affect TH1, how, to, for example, vitamin A, uh, raw garlic, UVA, polysaccharides from reishi, and, and then go to TH2. When TH2 is overactive, it leads to certain types of IgE hypersensitivities or allergies, like seasonal allergies, asthma, allergic rhinitis. Here we see some of the things that can help with that to modulate it. And I think that'll keep you guys busy until the next video comes out. So thanks again for joining me. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section. And I will see you next time.